What is it about perspective that you as an artist or designer need to know? And how can you fit this information into your creative process? Well, these are the questions that I'll be answering in this video. In part one, you're gonna see the four main components that every perspective drawing has. In part two, I'm gonna show you three perspective types and break down how other artists use them in their work. And part three is all about action. I'm gonna give you this incredibly valuable perspective guide to practice everything that you're about to learn. At the end of the video, click the link in the description to download that free guide. Okay, let's get into it. First, I just wanna give a broad definition of perspective. So what is it? I like to think of it as a tool that artists and designers use to help them create a believable three-dimensional composition on a flat two-dimensional surface or computer screen. This tool is made up of four different parts working together. The first part is the viewer. Everything that we can see in the artwork is from the perspective of the viewer. Think of it like you're placing a camera in the best position in order to capture the image you want. Next is the horizon. This is the furthest point from the viewer. If you have an image like a desert where the ground is flat, the horizon line is really easy to spot. It's this area here in the distance where the ground seems to come to an end. Then we have the vanishing point. This is a point we place on the horizon line where everything within the image converges towards that point. Finally, we have the three axes. These are the three guidelines that help us determine the width, height, and depth of objects when rendering them. So those are the main components of perspective. Now let's see how we use these components in each perspective type. All right, here's a diagram showing the top view of a very basic scene. This is our viewer looking at two green blocks in a cloud. Exciting, right? Okay, one block is close to the viewer, off to the right. The other one is placed in the distance on the left, and the cloud is floating somewhere in the middle. Now let's look at the scene from the viewer's perspective. When I place this horizon line across the canvas, you can already get a sense of the space that the viewer is standing in. Next, I'll drop in each of the elements. As you can see, the closer box appears larger than the other box. Also, look at the base of the boxes. The one in the distance has a base that is higher up, near the horizon. The closer box has a base that is much lower than the horizon. Okay, now we're gonna add some depth to this scene. We do that by putting a dot right here in the middle of the horizon. This is the vanishing point. Now we'll draw a guideline from the corners of each box to the vanishing point. With those guidelines, we can now fill in the sides of the boxes and give a sense of depth to our drawing. And this is the perfect time to introduce the three axes. In perspective drawings, all objects are built using imaginary lines that travel in three different directions. Depending on the perspective type you're using, the three axes will behave differently. Since we're in one point perspective, here's what we can expect. Any lines that go horizontally from left to right are on the X axis. Any lines that go vertically up and down are on the Y axis. And all lines that are on the Z axis recede toward the vanishing point, showing the depth of objects. Let's look at an actual drawing created in one point perspective. This artwork was created by Alexander Mandarajeev. It's called The Heist. We have this futuristic thief standing on a dark street, sporting some kind of blaster in a briefcase that contains something probably pretty valuable. Off in the distance is where the action's happening with lights that appear to be police cars or searchlights. This is our horizon. Here are the lines that travel on the x-axis, left to right. These lines travel on the y-axis, up and down. And these lines recede to the vanishing point on the z-axis. I wanna point out that some of these lines are slightly off axis, and that's okay. Just remember that the goal is not to create a perfect perspective, but to create compositions that are believable. All right, now let's learn about two-point perspective. Here's the top view again, similar to one-point perspective, but with a key difference. First, instead of looking directly at the face of the objects, our viewer is standing off to the right, facing the corner of the objects. Now let's go back in the viewer's shoes. Just like before, we have the horizon line, the boxes, and the cloud. But now I have two points instead of one. This subtle change alters the direction of our three axes. Similar to the last one, any lines placed on the y-axis are still vertical, but this time, the lines on the x-axis are not horizontal. Instead, they recede to the first vanishing point on the left, 
and likewise the lines on the z-axis recede to the vanishing point on the right. Now what about this cloud? Aside from getting the position correct, you have a lot more artistic freedom with shapes like this that are more organic. Since we're just covering the basics, we won't get into how to render all the different shapes in perspective because that could be a video all by itself. Now, let's look at a drawing in two-point perspective. This one's called Medical Bay by Linda Lee. Here is this highly advanced medical facility. There is some kind of surgery or autopsy taking place. Here's our horizon line. Here's some of the vertical elements on the y-axis. The lines on the z-axis all converge at this vanishing point within the frame of the drawing. And if we follow the lines on the x-axis, they lead us way over here off the frame and meet up with the horizon at this vanishing point. It goes to show that you can experiment with the placement of your vanishing points and horizon to come up with some pretty cool perspectives. Okay, moving on now to three-point perspective. This one is very similar to two-point perspective in that the viewer is not directly facing the subjects, but off to the side. Now, if you remember, in one-point perspective, we had one axis that receded to one vanishing point. In two-point perspective, we had two axes receding to two vanishing points. Now, if you can guess, this time, all three of our axes will be converging toward a different point. The first two points are placed somewhere on the horizon, just like last time but the third point will be placed above or below the horizon. Here we placed it above the horizon. You can see how it makes the top of the boxes seem narrower than the bottom. Let's look at another example drawing. This city concept called District 20 was done by Ghidris Sakalis. It's such a dramatic aerial scene. The bottom of the buildings are so narrow, they almost come to a point and sort of look like they're piercing the ground. Here the horizon line is way above the frame. Here's the X and Z axes spanning out to their respective vanishing points. And the Y axis meets down here in this dark cluster of buildings. It's worth noting that the closer this vanishing point is to the horizon, the more dramatic the tapering effect will be. Well, congratulations, you now know the four components necessary to create perspective drawings, and you possess the knowledge of the three perspective types. I hope you're ready to get your hands dirty because part three is up to you. I've put together this perspective guide to help you practice sketching out simple compositions in one point, two point, and three point perspectives. This is not meant to be a work of art. It's just a set of exercises to get you familiar with the process. Go ahead and get your free guide using the link in the description. The goal of my channel is to help you survive and thrive in your journey as an independent artist. I'd love to have you join my tribe. All you have to do is click subscribe and ding the notification bell. If you like this video, please let me know by clicking that thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.